Alright, this video is just about um, a little experimenting we're doing for an up and coming project when it turns up. So I went and ordered myself one of these little static generators and um, from New Zealand and watching the videos they chuck out a pretty good spark um, up to about 15 mils, fairly repetitive and if you close the gap right up to a couple of mils of course you get a very high frequency spark across there. This one runs on two AA batteries has a motor this side and a motor on the other side uh, spinning in opposite directions of course and um, the idea is to try and use the energy in this spark uh, to recharge the batteries as it's running so until I get it I won't know how much current it draws and um, that sort of stuff so we'll have to wait for the kit to turn up but uh, just a couple of small motors and a couple of AA batteries I wouldn't think the current draw would be too much so we've made up a little test kit here to see if we can tap into the um, spark gap and generate a current, a rectified current to recharge batteries with. So we've just made up a uh, 555 timer kit and um, a uh, 2N3055, uh, it's actually a TIP3055 this one, on a heat sink doesn't seem to get hot at all. A large cap uh, before the battery because I have no doubt that it would draw a fair bit of current um, when that transistor switches on. So uh, this can store a fair bit of energy and um, deliver that to the circuit in pulses and our battery simply keeps the uh, cap topped up just to smooth things out a little bit. The first thing I did when I fired this up was fried this fan because I had the fan connected straight into the chockey block here which our transistor is also connected to and of course our coil and it went good for about a minute or so and then just passed out. So I don't think it liked the RF too much so what we've done here, um, I've put another fan on and behind that I have a small cap and a choke and we're feeding it from our large cap here this time and it seems to be doing okay. Uh, over here we have our adjustable spark gap um, and you'll see I have put a small toroid with 22 windings around it um, and that is in between the line from the ground of the coil to our spark gap. And then coming off it I've done one single turn around it and um, that coil there, the secondary is being fed to this full weight bridge rectifier and we're hoping to be able to charge a battery from the output of that. So you will see here I do have a battery and the plan is to um, course not use normal batteries we'll be using uh, rechargeables in our little static generator there and at the moment uh, this is a lithium ion at the moment we have um, 0.779 volts in it it's a very healthy battery near new I've just drained it down for uh, the purposes to see as to how fast we can charge that battery um, using our spark gap set up here. Also uh, put a little neon across the transistor to save it because um, we do get some interruptions in the uh, spark. It's a little bit erratic and um, you'll see this neon light up every now and then. So that's just protecting our transistor. We have RF all over the place and um, if I can find it, I'll just have to get another one. Uh, we've got our little neon bulb here. 
and uh, we can pretty much well touch any surface on this device and the little neon will light up and if I bring my finger close to this neon here not touching anything that also lights up oddly enough so I must be acting as some form of uh, antenna or capacitive coupling to uh, one side of the neon alright so going to uh, hook up our battery we wish to charge and um, we'll start the device up now I'm not sure how it's going to affect the camera this camera doesn't seem to be too bad um, as long as you're not too close to the RF um, output but uh, we'll see how we go no doubt it will be a little bit glitchy but um, we'll give it a run see how it goes so 0.781 volts in our um, battery at the moment not sure why that went up when I hooked it to the uh, thing but anyway it did go up a little, I'm pretty sure it was 0.77 before but I did discharge it so it may be getting a little recovery voltage there but nonetheless we want to see if uh, this works so we can use this um, little transformer here type setup on our static generator when it turns up now this uses a lot more power of course and uh, there will be a lot more energy in our spark but we just want to see if the uh, principle here is sound and um, see if we can actually charge our battery so we'll hook the noisy little rocket up and see how we go battery is already 1.2 volts um, that's going to be a surface charge you'll see it starting to come down once it starts to soak the charge in hopefully because I'm pretty sure that battery won't be fully charged right now but um, it is charging this one here we do have a frequency adjustment see our little neon come on you'll see that when I bring my finger near it it starts to light up and of course if we grab it grab our other one we do have RF all over the place. Even if I touch the pot, it makes a difference. It does seem to be charging our battery, it does seem to work, um, if anyone's got a more efficient way of doing this, then um, let us know, but you will see um, our neon, if we didn't have that across our transistor that would have been fried some time ago, and the fan is still working so it's uh, doing a lot better than this one did hook directly to um, the input to our circuit. <coughs> so first attempt, um, we seem to be able to charge our battery, no problem there. And um, that'll be taking a good solid charge at the moment now that the voltage is settled. So hopefully it's going to work the same on this device here with this little coil here we can put in between one of these rods 
and the connection for that rod Yeah, just a, uh, a first up go and um, seems to be working okay. I'm going to let that run for 10 odd minutes and then um, do a discharge test on the battery and see if it's um, actually charging the battery and we haven't just got some form of um, surface voltage across the battery without it being charged. Putting the scope across the outputs here, I used my old scope, I'm not going to use my new scope. Um, I do get a very nice um, AC or a DC waveform, or an AC waveform off of there, and a nice DC waveform um, on the output of the rectifier that's fairly clean, a couple of little spikes here and there but fairly clean and um, we have 22 to 1 ratio on our transformer um, is giving us a peak voltage on that waveform of about uh, 4.2 volts um, and that's on the DC output so uh, that would be quite adequate for charging a 1.2 volt battery Right, so that's it for this little experiment. Um, like I said, it was just a test bed. I set up quickly to see if I could actually charge the battery by placing this little transformer here in a series with the line coming from the ground side of our uh, coil to our spark gap. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll be back once this beautiful little machine turns up. Now with postage, that cost me only $37. So $37 for the machine and postage from New Zealand. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. And uh, when it turns up, we'll put it together have a little bit of fun with it and then uh, we'll go ahead and set it up something similar to this and see if we can charge some batteries. But it seems to be working a treat at the moment. 1.4 volts in that battery. But uh, some of that will be a uh, surface voltage and of course the deep charge will be a lot less than that. Okay, we'll see you next video.